why, how, and what of user stories. Learn to write it properly. Let's look at the first question. Why do we need user stories? During the days of Waterfall, we used to write requirements in different formats like BRDs, TDDs, use cases, etc. I am not saying there is a problem with this, but we miss two important things, the user and incremental thinking. While writing user stories always keep the invest method in mind, this means that every story has to be independent, negotiable, valuable, estimable, small, and testable. Thanks, Pam, that was good. But I have a question. What is the difference between epics, user stories, and tasks? I'm always getting confused with these. Good question. Let's look at it one by one. Let's look at the relationship between themes, epics, stories, and tasks. A theme can have multiple epics, an epic can have multiple stories, and a story can have multiple tasks. Let's start looking into each of them, starting with epics. The simple definition of an epic is, it's a feature or fix that is too large to complete in a sprint. I believe we are familiar with e-commerce websites, so let's take an example from that. You can create an account or login, that is one epic. Another will be the payment methods. We can't complete this as one story or in one sprint. Hence, we have to create multiple stories for this. A user story is a piece of work that can be completed in a sprint. If we take our last example, where Logan is an epic, that epic can have multiple user stories under that like, account creation, login, social media, login. These user stories should be created in a way that each of them is individually consumable and deliverable in a sprint. A task is the smallest unit of work that is being used to track the work. A user story can have multiple tasks. If we take the last example, social media login can have multiple tasks like UI integration and API integration. Now you might be wondering, what is this theme? This is a larger unit of work that could be related to multiple epics, user stories, tasks, etc. With our earlier example, we understood what is an epic, stories, and task. If you look at this, all of these are related to a bigger functionality called My Account. In this case, we can create My Account as theme. Now we can look at the next W, the what. As we discussed earlier, we have to write a user story from the perspective of a user. It's ideal to create personas so we can define personas for each area. Persona creation and affinity is a bigger topic and hence we could take that as a separate session. For now, imagine the front end persona's name is Pam. Now let's take our earlier scenario of login. Pam wants to buy some shoes and she is trying to log in to this website. If we put this in simple English, then your first user story is ready. As Pam, I should be able to log in from the homepage. Once I log in, I should be able to identify that I am logged in successfully. Great, this is clear, but if we write just this inside a story, then every developer could start imagining their own versions, right? For example, after login, one could imagine a success message as a pop-up, and the other could imagine it as a status change on the top right side. How can we specify the details? Like what exactly should happen when completing a user story? You are right. That is where we have to look at the next step, the how. Now, let's move on to the last part, how to write a user story. There are different ways to approach this. Please don't assume this is the only way to write user stories, but in my experience, this worked well with all teams. It's called BDD, Behavior Driven Development. This focuses on writing a user story by meeting business needs and user requirements. When you write stories in this format, it is easy to keep the focus of everyone in your team on user's action and what he or she is trying to accomplish with that. Let's look at the same story and see how we can add acceptance criteria to that. 
Inside the description, you can use the BDD method of writing. Establish the status and position of the user. Given I have access to the home page and I am on the home page. This way, I am establishing the fact and locking the scope that the home page is already developed and Pam is on the home page. Now we have to explain what is Pam trying to do when I try to log in with my existing account details. Here we are setting the expectation to developers and testers that Pam already has an account she is trying to log in from the home page and what should happen after this. Then I should be able to click on the login button on the top right corner. On clicking that, a pop-up should show up where I should be able to enter my username and password. You can even attach the image of the login pop-up. On successful login, I should be taken back to the home page and the login button should change and show my name and image. Hope this was clear and I believe you understand why we need to write user stories, how to write them, and what should be inside them. If you want to refresh what we have learned and discussed today, then you can watch the YouTube Shorts video. I have given the link to that at the top and also along with the description. Thanks, Pam. This was wonderful and has given me a different perspective on approaching and writing user stories. I will start with this, and if I have more questions, can I reach back to you? Really glad to hear that you like this video on user stories. Of course, you can reach out to me. If you have any questions or if you want me to cover any particular areas, then please leave a comment. I will look into that. Also, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. That will help me reach out to more audiences and create more content like this. Thank you.